chances are if you ended up on this video you are a frequent cruiser or you are just interested in the cruise industry as a whole so today I want to share with you what it's actually like to be a crew member working on a cruise ship Hi, my name is Jordan and I am a professional figure skater who has been working on cruise ships for just about five years now. So I have a good idea of what the day-to-day -day life looks like on board as a crew member. That being said, I am an entertainer on board, so my life and my work schedule is a bit different than majority of the people who work on board, but I am going to share as much information as possible for you so you get a real understanding of what it's like to work on a cruise ship, whether you are someone who enjoys cruising as a guest or you are looking to join a cruise ship as a crew member yourself. Living and working on board a cruise ship is unlike anything else it is such a unique experience that i don't think anything can compare to it definitely is a challenging environment to live in and it's definitely not for everyone i personally really enjoy it but of course it does have its pros and cons if you are a crew member on board chances are the pros significantly outweigh the cons there are negatives to any work environment however i absolutely love my job on board it's something that has been a huge part of my life as long as I can remember. I get to skate for a living and perform in front of hundreds of thousands of people every single week. So I could not be more grateful for this job and yeah, it's definitely an experience of a lifetime. If you guys wanna keep up with me on a more frequent basis, you can follow my socials. I will have those in the description box as I always do. But without further ado, let's jump on into it. As you probably already know, the life of a crew member working on board is very, very different than that of a guest coming to cruise on board. This goes without saying because the guests are paying for a vacation, so they are here to relax, enjoy, and simply just not work. But the accommodations are significantly different, which you can probably already assume based on where I am filming this video. I am currently sitting in the bottom bunk of a bunk bed in a double cabin. The rooms on board for the crew members are very, very minimal, and you probably assume that they aren't these huge extravagant rooms however I don't think people understand just how small these crew cabins are the room that we live in on board for months at a time is probably no bigger than 10 by 15 feet and that also includes a bathroom that we share with another person in my personal situation I am living with my boyfriend so it is the best possible outcome for a roommate situation but that's not typically the case for most crew members on board of course that is not always the case but majority of crew members do share a cabin with another person and that person is usually from their department if not their department then their division so I do live here with my boyfriend but if he was not on board typically the ice skaters live with other ice cast members and if we don't live with ice skaters then we traditionally live with dancers or someone else from the cruise division and of course not every single person on board shares a cabin depending on your ranking and your position you might have your own room for example officers have a better room than us they're much bigger they even have like a living room sometimes and they definitely have a porthole which is another thing that we do not have in these teeny tiny rooms we don't have any sort of natural light at any given point in the day you might not know what time it is unless you look at a clock but for me environment such a big thing so i really try to make the cabin as cozy as possible and make it feel very homey so it's a place that i enjoy spending time in and coming back to every single day the rooms are very bare and they're very basic when you do first move in so it is important to make it a space that you really enjoy that being said it's very small so you can't do too much with the place but i did buy a shelving unit for some more storage and it just made the room look a little more lively as well as like a fun blanket hanging pictures on the walls stringing lights things of that sort another misconception on board is that we eat almost the same food as the guests, which could not be further from the truth. We do have a crew mess and a staff mess, which is two different places that we can eat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it is incredible because it is free. That being said, 
the quality of the food is not nearly the same as what it is in the buffet for the guests and it's definitely not the same variety so we tend to see the exact same foods every single day for lunch and dinner it never really changes up and it can get very very repetitive of course i am so thankful that we don't have to pay for food because that's a huge expense that i would be paying for it if i was on land however when the food is the same thing every day and you want to something specific we are able to go to the windjammer which is the buffet for guests as an entertainer on board we do have that privilege we just will have to pay three dollars to enter and that really really helps Granted, sometimes our schedule doesn't allow it. We don't have enough time because we have to go at a certain window. And because of that, it does really break it up for us better. And I'm super grateful we can go there. We can also go to the specialty restaurants, which is an added charge. So I try not to do that too often. That's more of a special basis sort of thing. But Windjammer, I try to get to more frequently than not, just because it gives us a bigger variety and food is very important to me. Let's talk about Wi-Fi. If you've cruised, you know that Wi-Fi can be a little bit spotty on board and not the strongest. It's not as strong as the internet access you are used to when you are home. And you do have to pay for it as a guest, but you do also have to pay for it as a crew member. I know other cruise lines offer free Wi-Fi for the crew members on board, and I so wish that Royal would implement that. It's definitely wishful thinking, but it would be a game changer if they did. And unfortunately, we do have to pay for the Wi-Fi, which rounds out at about $4 for 60 minutes of internet. It is very expensive and a lot of us just don't want to pay that money. So I do work a little side job and I work Wi-Fi, if you will. That's how I explain it. But basically I just help people who come on board set up their Wi-Fi account and purchase packages if that's something they want to do. For that little side job, I get paid in minutes, so I'm given minutes in exchange for my time. And that goes a long way because it's saving me a lot of money that I would have had to spend on purchasing the same amount of minutes. Another thing that you might not realize is that crew members are actually not allowed off the ship right away. There is always priority for the guests and we can usually get off the ship pretty quickly after we dock but of course there is a little bit of a waiting period especially on turnaround day when we are disembarking all of the guests so usually there is a set time of when we can start getting off of the ship for miami that means 9 a.m for the crew members so if you have work at 10 you really don't have time to get off and this goes for other ports as well if it is a tender port you're looking at getting off maybe two to three hours after we actually arrive to that port same thing goes with the tender coming back to the ship you're gonna want to try and get that tender back to the ship probably around two hours before all aboard maybe an hour is pushing it something that I found really difficult to accept when I first became a crew member on board is that the company actually holds your passport for me I felt uneasy about this because there's no one I trust as much as myself and I want to know where it is at any given moment but that's just part of the job when we do sign on we are handing over our passports to the hr center and they are safely storing it so it's all organized and put away very safely but you don't have access to your passport for the entire contract you're probably wondering how we can go shopping for snacks and toiletries and things like that. The most obvious way is to get off on turnaround day in whatever port you are and just go to the grocery store. However, we do also have a little mini market, if you will, on board for the crew, and it's called the Slop Chest. So it offers an assortment of snacks like chips, chocolates, crackers, candies, sodas, juices all that kind of stuff and they do also offer things such as razors hand soap bar soap shaving gel loofahs deodorant hairspray you name it there's a bunch of different stuff that you can buy there i try to stay away from slop chests as much as possible because the prices are marked up significant amount so it is better to just buy it off the ship and bring it on board but sometimes you are in a pinch and you just need to swing by really fast and get whatever it is and that is very useful to have for us another thing we are able to do on board is 
receive packages so we're able to order stuff online and have it delivered to the ship which is incredible it's one of my favorite things it feels like Christmas every turnaround that a package arrives it's everything for Jordan <laughs> Have the boys are helping me carry all 20 packages I have. We need the whole entourage. <laughs> so we have a couple options for this. We can send it to a ministry which delivers it to the ship. There's also another address that we can send to and we have to pay five dollars per package which can be a little bit annoying if you're buying a bunch of things online because it adds up very fast. But for example with Amazon you can order them all in the same package so you're just paying one time we're also able to receive cards as well to the same address so i'll have that link below for you if you guys ever feel like sending me a little card i absolutely love receiving your notes and i really appreciate it another fact you might not know about working on board is that we do have to pay for our own uniforms i'm not 100 percent certain if this goes for every single department on board however as an ice cast in the cruise division we do have to pay for our uniforms which are called our blues so it is a pair of shorts we've got pants we have shirts and we also have jackets so it is a bit pricey and I think every fourth contract we get a new uniform for free but if you want an additional t-shirt or a pair of shorts you are going to have to pay for that living on board as a crew member is definitely a unique experience and we do build a bit of a community because we do all have that common ground of loving to travel and at the end of the day we are all crew members so something that I find really interesting to note is that a lot of people on board also have side gigs and you know passion projects that they are still pursuing while working on board so there are a lot of people on board who cut hair so they'll set up their little barber shop literally off of the i-95 or in a crew corridor and people will show up to get their hair cut there's also people doing nails freelance so you can make an appointment with them and they will do your nails somebody in my cast is a massage therapist he has his license so he does have a few clients on board that he works with so i just think that's really cool that we all might be doing a set job here on the ship but after hours you can really see those crew members do something that they really really love I have shown the i-95 about a billion times in my videos but the i-95 is actually a pathway that leads from the front of the ship all the way to the aft of the ship and this is in the crew area so if you're ever getting off at the gangway you might get a tiny glimpse of the i-95 and basically it's just the easiest way for the crew members to get from the front to the back of the ship without going through guest areas as far as the contract goes the duration of the contract can vary significantly depending on where you work but contracts can be anywhere from four months long to even 10 or 11 months long my contracts on average are about seven to eight months long my longest contract was 10 months long and my shortest one was four months long so it really just depends on what ship you are on and when the handover is within the casts again I am part of the ice cast so it does differ for me compared to other people who work on the ship to build on top of that with these contracts being so long and everyone being away from home for many months at a time it is very rare for most crew members to get a single day off within their contract I'm very, very blessed that I get time off from my job and I get time to recover and rest and really enjoy the port days. But unfortunately, this is not the case for a lot of the crew members on board. They work very long hours and every single day and they are honestly so impressive to me because I could not imagine working the amount of hours that they do. But again, everybody's contract is different, so this is different for everyone but as a rule most people work every single day like i mentioned because we are away from home for many months at a time it can get a bit exhausting and you really need that support or friendship group to rely on so something that hr does for us is they do offer various activities for the crew members on board which is really fun sometimes they'll do movie nights in the theater they will have basketball tournaments they will do 
all crew parties. Sometimes they will even close off guest venues for us to use for a crew party, which is really a lot of fun. Those happen probably once a month or once every other month. We do also offer open skate for the crew, so that's a fun activity that we run and help out with. They open the slides and the flow rider for us sometimes, so they just do a bunch of different stuff for us. So Crew Welfare really does try their best to use the money that they make from the slop chest and from other sales from the crew to put it into really fun activities for us to enjoy. Last bullet point is kind of ironic considering I'm in the cabin by myself right now, but it is very rare for crew members to ever be alone. So we really don't have a ton of alone time because you are always surrounded by people, which is incredible. As an extrovert, I absolutely love it. I love being around people. It gives me more energy rather than drains my energy. But even though I love being around people, I also really value time by myself and I think it's so important for everyone to have that time alone. So it is important to prioritize that and try your best to have those moments by yourself. And because most people share a room together, chances are you are both in the room at the same time, unless you have opposite schedules, but still you are sharing the space. So it can be tricky, but again, you can either look at it as an advantage or a disadvantage. And I always am looking at everything half class full. So I love being around people, but you do have to also prioritize you number one. I hope this video gives you a bit of an insight of what it's like to work on a cruise ship. I have filmed a few different videos regarding this, so I'll have those linked below if you want to check them out. Of course, there's many more things to mention, but these are just a few that I wanted to highlight. I do also have a ton of vlogs showing you realistically what my life looks like working on board, so you can check those out. And as always, if you have specific questions, I'm happy to answer them, so you can comment them down below or if you have specific video requests, I'm always open to ideas. But I love you all to the moon and back. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day whenever you're watching this. Bye, guys.